Hi everyone, welcome to the Everlasting Gospel, JesusTheGoodNews.com Weekly Bible Study. I'm Jerry Lynn Davis, minister to the unsaved and humble servant of Master Jesus Christ. The reason that we have blessed hope, folks. The reason that we have the promise of eternal life. Once we freely choose to believe on Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God the Father, who freely chose to lay his life down for us. Fully God, fully man, sinless, the perfect Lamb of God. Amen. Praise you, Lord Jesus. He shed his blood, died on the cross, an excruciatingly painful death for the sins of the whole world. He was laid in the tomb, and on the third day he arose triumphantly to conquer sin and death, to destroy the works of the devil, who is the prince of this world. A fallen angel condemned to hell for eternity. Praise your Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to the channel, folks. I invite you to like, share, and subscribe. And I invite you to partake of the living word of Almighty God. That's what this channel is all about, to give all glory to Almighty God, to lift up Jesus Christ, and to follow the leading guiding of the Holy Spirit. This word is intended for all of us, folks, saved and unsaved alike. It's our love letter from Almighty God, the only book in this entire world that contains the absolute truth, because every word is inspired by the Holy Spirit of Almighty God. The only book in this entire world that can benefit everyone for eternity because it gives us instruction and warning and wisdom. That can't come from worldly agendas and books, folks. Only the pure word of Almighty God. If you're in need of a Bible, check out HTTPS, JesusTheGoodNews.com. Request your free Bible. Click on the Bibles tab or borrow one, buy one. If there's one in your house, dust it off. Open it up and start reading it. Ask the Lord to give you understanding. He is faithful because he wants us all to have understanding of his word, and he will give it to you if you are sincere in your heart and truly desire to draw close to him. If you are unsaved, consider today we are all going somewhere for eternity. If you die in a state of rejecting Jesus Christ, you will be condemned to hell, which is indeed a real place. Think about it today. Amen. We're continuing here and starting a new book in the Lord's Word, the second epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Thessalonians, or 2 Thessalonians, the second letter that the Apostle Paul had written to the body of Christ in Thessalonica, an area in Greece. In this particular introduction of this chapter, Paul and the brethren that, that are with him, Timotheus and Salvinus, they are encouraging the brethren because the body of Christ is continuing to grow. They are continuing to shine the light of Jesus Christ in their area of the world through the body of Christ. And the church is growing. They are being faithful to the Lord. They are encouraging one another, edifying one another, working together in unity the true characteristic of the true church, the body of Christ, not a man-made denomination that is nothing but a tax-exempt worldly vanity. This is the true body of Christ. That is the only true church there is, folks, and it's not Catholic, which is a pagan cult. So again, 2 Thessalonians, I'm going to pray over the message. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, dear Lord, for the blessing of another day. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace, dear Lord, for your faithfulness, for not being a respecter of persons, for your patience. Dear Lord, I ask you to bless this message and equip me to deliver it. I ask, Lord, that you 
tug upon the hearts of those that are listening to this message to draw them closer to you through your Holy Spirit, dear Lord. I pray that those who hear these words are encouraged to draw closer to you to get a copy of your word if they need it, Lord, so they may also partake of this precious gift on a daily basis. I pray, Lord, that you continue to equip me and all of your servants, your children, to reach out to those in need according to your will. Thank you, Lord, most of all, for Jesus Christ, your precious only begotten Son. To you be all the glory, dear Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, folks. So again, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. This section is fairly short, only 12 verses in this uh, first chapter, but it's filled with a powerful encouragement. Amen. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, folks, Almighty God is not our Father until we are saved and serving Jesus Christ, despite what Francis the false prophet tries to tell everyone. Indeed. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. Again, a beautiful illustration of the true church, the true body of Christ. Amen. So that we ourselves glory in you and the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. Once we are saved in serving Jesus Christ, we are going to be persecuted. We are going to suffer tribulation. It's just something that is part of the walk of faith as a servant of Jesus Christ, as a child of Almighty God, we will indeed suffer persecution. And Paul is encouraging the brethren here, in spite of all of the persecutions and tribulations they are enduring, they are abiding in faith and patience. They are continuing to keep the faith. They are continuing to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are called to endure. Endure till the end, says Jesus Christ. He who endures till the end shall be saved. Amen. Which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer. The righteous judgment of God. Amen. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Indeed. The Lord God says in his word, vengeance is mine. I will repay. Once we are served, saved in serving Jesus Christ, we should not be focused on seeking revenge on anyone even if they do wrong to us or our loved ones. Give it to the Lord. I know it's a very, very hard thing to do at times. But the Lord promises us that he will repay. And he will indeed repay. Justice will be served in the right timing. It's a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Amen. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Paul's offering comfort here. The promise, the hope of Jesus Christ returning 
for his saints. The saints are those who are saved in serving Jesus Christ, the true body of Christ, not the false Catholic doctrine of canonizing saints. That is nothing but idolatry and witchcraft, not in the Lord God's word. If we read in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, I'm going to go there now, verses 29 through 31. This is Jesus Christ during his Olivet Discourse when he sat upon the Mount of Olives, speaking of things that are about to take place in the future. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. The tribes of the earth will mourn, those that pierce Jesus Christ, those that have rejected Jesus Christ, those that are mocking Jesus Christ, those that are following the world and their vanity grasping on to stupidity like uh, climate change and evolution and Big Bang Theory and all this other garbage that's being spread throughout the world. Those people are going to see the Son of Man. Everyone's going to see him. So there's no mistake. It's Jesus Christ returning. People will be mourning because they will realize they were wrong. And it will be too late for them. And then what happens? And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other, his elect. Those of us who are saved and serving Jesus Christ, waiting for him. Amen. Those that are rejecting him will mourn. Continuing here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. That says it all right here, folks. A powerful warning indeed. Those that know not God, that proclaim themselves to be atheists and they question the existence of God, who say, like Yuval Noah Harari, the only true God is the God of the clouds now, the internet clouds. People grasping onto this garbage that we are little gods. We don't need uh, the God of the sky, of the heavens. Those people, if they don't repent before this takes place, when Jesus returns, who obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, they shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Be warned today, if you are mocking Jesus Christ, if you think the Bible is a fairy tale or hate speech, you're in for a rude awakening if you don't Turn to Jesus Christ today and realize this is the only truth that exists and your only way out of eternal damnation. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Amen. Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. Amen. I'm going to go into 1 Thessalonians, the first letter that Paul had written here to the body of Christ in Thessalonica. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father. Amen. Paul 
concludes this section of his second letter to the Thessalonians, the body of Christ, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what it's all about, folks. Not about us. About Jesus Christ may be glorified in us. And us in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 7, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, again, the tribulation that we endure as servants of Jesus Christ, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Amen. This is such a powerful, enlightening, encouraging passage just in this short little chapter. Amen. Grasp onto it, folks. I pray that this message has encouraged you and inspired you to get your Bible inspired you to open it up, inspired you to draw closer to the Lord through Jesus Christ. Remember, folks, our time on this earth is short. Think about that today, and I pray that the Lord God continues to get your attention. Call on the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray you call on his name. Amen.